Let's continue now with the factors affecting the frequency of the sound instruments. Here we discussed about the loudness, factors affecting loudness. Now we are going to discuss about the uh, factors affecting the frequency of the sound instrument. See, we know that there are many types of sound instruments. We have wind instruments. Then we have string instruments. Third, percussion instrument. Okay, so here like flute, we are supposed to blow the air in and sound is produced and here the air molecules they vibrate in. Here the strings they vibrate, here the membrane they vibrate. So we'll be talking about all of them but in general, few of the things will always remain same for all the instruments. So the first factor that decides the frequency and now this time I'm going to mo mostly talk about these two instruments is the length. Okay, length of what? So length of, it may be air column. Or it may be the length of string. So if we talk about the wind instruments, it would be the length of air column and the length of the string in case of string instruments. Now it is seen, the proof of this is in grade 11. You may refer to grade 11 textbooks of waves in that waves chapter, you will find out the details about this topic. Frequency is inversely proportional to the length. So that means, suppose if I give you an example, you take three bottles and these all three bottles are identical. I may not be able to draw them as perfectly, but still these three bottles are identical A, B and C. This bottle is completely empty. This bottle is half filled with water and this bottle is filled till almost top with water. Now, if you look carefully, then here the length of the air column is very small. Here the length of the air column is comparatively bigger and here the length of the air column is highest. Now, when you blow the air in from the top, like this, right? Or if you just blow the air in from here, we may produce the sound of whistling. In the same way, if you blow the air in, the air particles which are over here are going to vibrate, here are going to vibrate and here are going to vibrate. The role of the liquids or the water is nothing over here, people. It is just to rebound the sound nothing else specifically. So the length of the air column is very large over here. So the sound produced will be of very low frequency. So low frequency sound or as we can say that lowest frequency sound comes out from A and highest frequency sound comes from C because the length of the air column is shortest. We can also say low frequency sound as low pitch sound and high frequency sound as high pitch sound. So high pitch sound or high frequency sound is produced from here whereas low frequency or low pitch sound is produced from here. Correct? Okay. In the same way, if we have say a guitar or if this is a guitar and this guitar has got a string whose length is very small. So the length of the string is say L1 and you have another guitar which is comparatively longer say like this and the length of the string over here is L2. This is guitar A, this is guitar B. Then length of the string is less over here, smaller. So here the frequency will be more. So high pitch or high frequency sound will be produced from this guitar. Comparatively low frequency and low pitch sound will be produced from guitar B. Correct? Okay. Now. The second one, the second factor, okay, just before going to the second factor, I would like to tell one thing. You can apply the same thing in percussion instrument. See, in percussion instrument, you have a drum which is like this and you have a drum which is like this whose surface area is larger. And we know that from the top part, the drum, the membrane of the drum is circular, right? This is the side view that we are seeing. 
and now this is the diameter let's call this as d1 this is the diameter let's call this as d2 diameter is a type of length so that means if you hit these two drums a and b with same amount of force lesser the length lesser the diameter high frequency sound will be produced from this drum compared to this drum same logic in all type of instruments correct now the second one is the tension tension is a type of force that is generally found in the strings so say for example you have a string like this two strings both are of equal length say l and l now i am pulling this string in this direction outward direction but i am pulling this string in the outward direction with more force so let's say i am pulling them with 100 newton of force in the outward direction but here 500 newton force in the outward direction like this then this wire is said to be having under more tension so this wire is under more tension tension means the tightness and it is found that frequency is directly proportional to tension that's why in guitar you might be seeing some knobs on the top and more you turn the knob more the tighter the strings and high frequency sound will be produced so the third factor that affects the frequency of the sound is the thickness of the strings now thickness in case of the strings if you are working with the musical instruments like uh, the string instruments but if you are having the percussion instruments then the thickness of the membrane is what i am talking about over here and it is a fact that frequency is inversely proportional to the thickness so in guitar suppose if you are using a thick string so this is string of some definite length l but it is quite thick its diameter is comparatively bigger and you are having a very thin string same length this is string b if you pluck both of them you will see that the sound of high pitch will be coming from here and the low pitch will be coming from here in the same way if you have a drum in which the uh, membrane is quite thick so thicker membranes they always produce a low frequency sound and uh, if you are having a thinner membrane it will produce high frequency sound so that's it people and uh, um, these are the factors that affect the frequencies but just before ending i would like to tell you two equations that you will learn in grade 11 this is f is equal to n upon 2l under root t by mu and another frequency formula is v times 2n minus 1 upon 4 times l this is the frequency of the waves which are produced on a rope and you can see that this tension this is mass per unit length or it is actually you can call this as a thickness also <clears throat> mass per unit length means um, more denser the medium less would be the frequency also it is in actually inversely variate uh, inversely varying with the mass per unit length and this is the length so if you take a longer rope a shorter frequency uh, waves would be produced and over here you can see that these are the the frequency formula for the sound waves which are produced in a pipe longer the pipe shorter will be the frequency so that's it people and i'm not going to discuss much about this here right now because this is the lecture for basically grade 8 to 10 so you will learn about these two in grade 11 but whatever we have done is in sync with these two formulas so if you have any doubts people please do ask in the comment section and thank you for watching the video